What's going on guys? It's your boy Ricky back with another video. Hey, listen, I know it's been a while since I've been on here and I do apologize. However, I am adjusting to life outside of the military as well as my schedule with Major League Baseball and then just juggling everything else, my side projects and all that. So sometimes it's kind of hard to get back in the groove of YouTube. However, I have come up with a formula. I've come up with more of a better workflow to get more videos out to you guys as soon as possible. But what I'm doing now is I'm starting a series and it's called How I Got Into Sports Photography. And what I'll be doing is I'll be interviewing different industry professionals and they'll tell their story about how they got into sports photography. Because I get this question all the time, how did you get into it, how do you get on the sidelines? And I'm hoping through these videos I'm able to answer some of those questions or give the roadmap to some people who are looking to get into the industry. First up is Mary Holt. I met her through working with MLB. All right, without further ado, Mary Holt. Hi, my name is Mary Holt. I am a freelance sports photographer based in Tampa, Florida. So I freelance for a lot of people, which is really cool. The Miami Dolphins just brought me on last year. University of South Florida, Icon Sportswire, and I also ESPN, Wild Photo Sports in Orlando. And then lots of colleges and pro teams from around the country that come down and need a photographer. Okay, so I was a teacher, a middle school um, English teacher for a really long time and I wasn't very good at it. So I, I loved it, I loved the students, but when I got pregnant with my son, I actually got a chance to get out of it. It was just really good timing. And so I took a year and, and had my son, raised my son and kind of had that, oh my God, what do I do now? moment. I knew I didn't want to go back in the classroom and I just remembered how much I loved photography when I was little. I actually wanted to be a photographer or a writer for National Geographic. I bought a camera, started doing babies because yeah, I had a little nugget and he was cute and he had friends and so I did them and branched out into weddings. Decided just to combine how good I was getting at photography with my love of sports. My friend actually, we were joking one day about how I should work for Disney as a photographer there. I was like, yeah, no, there's no way I would ever work for Disney. They wouldn't hire me. Well, then I just applied on a whim and they called me down. I flew down for an interview. I had one sports picture in my portfolio. I was actually had my baby in one arm, my camera in the other. I was leaning over the bullpen of a minor league team and got a cool picture, like a, almost like I was levitating. The boss really liked it there at ESPN and she brought me on. I learned a lot there, what it takes to make a good picture, what people are looking for as far as their pictures. Got a lot of exposure to a lot of different sports and activities, practiced a lot, and then decided I was kind of ready for that next step to get out and photograph more and more and learn more and more and practice more and more. So I just kind of branched out, started doing high school games, and I just cold emailed everybody I could, every athletic director I could think of or find their email address for, and maybe four or five responded and said, yeah, sure, you can come out to games. One of the highlights just happened, like I was in Sports Illustrated a few weeks ago, that was amazing, because when I was little I used to like, I never actually read Sports Illustrated, but I would flip through and look at the pictures, like the same thing I did with National Geographic. Being able to share that with my son and having him actually like read my name in Sports Illustrated, that was cool. My advice for anybody trying to get into this business is just don't stop, don't quit. It doesn't matter if you're taking pictures of little leaguers or Pop Warner kids on Saturdays. Just get as good as you can with what you have, the gear you have, and grow as much as you can, learn as much as you can, and take the next step. Ask everybody for a job. Like when I got started, I asked maybe 30 athletic directors if I could come out and shoot their games for free and give them the pictures, <laughs> and like four responded. The no's and the silence. I know it's really hard and heartbreaking sometimes to hear a no or to hear nothing at all, and I wish I could show you guys the list of how many people have rejected me, rejected me, rejected me until that one person I was like, yeah, I'll give you a shot. Um, whether or not it was paid or free, unfortunately in this line of business, we all do a lot of free work. Um, that's just the way it is, unfortunately, but you gotta grow somehow. You gotta get better somehow. Um, even if it's going out and shooting kids playing at the park, you know, um, or anything where things are moving and you're just practicing those skills of getting better and better, it does, you don't have to shoot professional athletes to be a good photographer. You can do it with four-year-old kids running around. Um, but yeah, just don't stop, don't give up. 